In the 19th century, the transcontinental railroads connected markets on both coasts of North America. At the same time, the world's most sophisticated communication system helped to make the United States the most powerful nation on Earth. The interstate highway system has opened vast new consumer markets by connecting buyers and sellers of goods and services across the nation. Today, we are on the threshold of a new era in communication and commerce. The prototype for that new era already exists. It's available now, today, to anyone who needs it. It's the first on-ramp to the information superhighway, Internet. Some highways will be made of fiber optics, others of coaxial uh, cable, others will be wireless. But this is a key point. They must and will be two-way highways so that each person will be able to send information uh, in video form as well as just words, as well as receiving information. Although the information superhighway as envisioned by the Clinton administration is still several years away, the initial infrastructure to support it is already in place. Taken together, these computer-driven thoroughfares are called Internet. But what is Internet and who uses it? How do you find your way onto Internet? Most important, what can you do once you get there? Let's begin by looking at what Internet is and who uses it. A computer is a self-contained, standalone system that helps you perform any number of tasks, such as word processing, drawing, or playing games. The power and flexibility and utility of a computer is greatly increased if it can be made to easily share information with other computers. The most efficient way to accomplish this is through a network. Networks are comprised of the wires or cables that link computers together and the software programs that send and receive information. There are many different kinds of networks. Local area networks such as Ethernet or Token Ring interconnect computers at a given location. Local networks at different locations can be linked together to form a wide area network. Wide area networks in geographically separate locations can be connected together over a long haul network. Internet is the world's largest collection of computer networks. Thousands of networks are connected to Internet, and more are being added every day. The power of Internet lies in the fact that any two computers connected to it can exchange information in real time, whether they are in the same room or on opposite sides of the Earth. Internet is a global, shared resource that anyone in the world can access. But who are these Internet users, and why do they use it? Internet users vary in sophistication, but they all have one thing in common. They're looking for information. If you want to exchange ideas and develop knowledge, then Internet is the place to be. Internet users can be divided into five categories. Because Internet began as a government-funded experimental network dedicated to defense research, the largest user base continues to be researchers. Commercial use is the second biggest segment of the Internet and will soon overtake the number one position. Defense, government, and educational segments comprise the remainder of Internet users. Since 1991, when the U.S. government relaxed rules limiting Internet access, the number of users has increased dramatically. Educators have taken the most advantage of this tremendous new resource, although the business community will soon surpass all others. So what kind of information is available over Internet? Here are just some of the topics and images that are currently available online. The nation's first electronic superstore is open for business on the information superhighway. Over 30% of first-class mail in the United States is currently sent electronically. Time. Newsweek, Omni, Field and & Stream, and Wired are just a few of the magazines available on Internet. More than 3,000 mailing lists are available. 
Commerce Business Daily is the source listing for all procurements made by the government. Photographs of cars and planes and Miss April plus thousands of others. More than 5,000 news groups on every imaginable topic. NASA broadcasts each shuttle mission start to finish over internet. Over a thousand library card catalogs are available to explore. Internet can serve as a backbone for desktop video teleconferencing. Two types of resources are accessible on internet, computers and people. Although anyone with a computer can access Internet, the level of access varies. Your ability to use Internet depends on the four system components that are required to access it. A computer, a modem, a software communications program, and a service provider. One of the reasons for Internet's phenomenal growth is that almost any computer can connect to it. PC compatibles running DOS or Windows, Macintosh or any Unix workstation. With minor variations, Internet utilities work the same way regardless of the computer used to access them. A modem is a piece of communication hardware that sits between a computer and a telephone line. Modems are the traffic cops of the information superhighway. They control the rate at which information is sent and received. A modem speed is designated by the number of bits it can send or receive in one second. Bits are the zeros and ones used by computers to exchange information. Quality modems with speeds capable of interfacing with Internet are available everywhere for less than $200. A software communication program allows a computer to control a modem. Hundreds of such programs are available, many of them free through computer clubs and bulletin boards. Or ask your local computer dealer for a recommendation. An Internet Service Provider is an organization that has a dedicated Internet connection. Because dedicated Internet connections are expensive, they are beyond the reach of most individuals and small businesses. So service providers sell their access to others, either by the hour or by the month. Typical prices are $2 to $3 per hour or $15 to $30 per month for unlimited access. The number of service providers is growing almost as fast as Internet itself. To get a list of the Internet service providers in your area, call your local library or university. Once you have a computer, a modem, communication software, and a service provider, how difficult is it to get online? It's this easy. Type in the local telephone number of your internet service provider. The first time you call, you log in as new. You'll be asked to enter information about yourself such as your name, your address, and your telephone number. Then you'll be asked to create a unique name for yourself, your Internet name. Once your name has been accepted, you'll be asked for a password. Select something short and cryptic, and preferably not a real word. Acronyms are always good. Your Internet name is your driver's license for the information superhighway. Your password is your ignition key. It provides access only to you. Protect your password as you would any valuable. So now that you have access, what can you do? Several services are available on Internet. These include electronic mail, remote access, file transfer, news, chat, and advanced services. To understand how to use these services, we must first become familiar with Internet's addressing system. In the non-Internet world, you must know several pieces of information to communicate with someone. A name, a postal address, a phone number, a fax number, and so on. On Internet, every computer and every person has a single unique address. Here is the Internet address for Sirius Solutions. 
the company that produced this videotape. Here is President Clinton's email address, and here are some others. Notice that all Internet addresses have the same basic format. The person's Internet username, followed by the at sign, followed by the user's domain name, which is really the name of a computer. Notice also that the domain name is often divided into subdomains, separated by periods. Each name tells you something about the computer. For example, this Internet address means a user named Rob is sitting at a computer named Goofy, a computer at the University of California at Santa Barbara, which is an educational institution. Other subdomain names include Net means the computer is at a networking organization. Gov is the U.S. government. Com is a commercial organization. Org is a nonprofit organization, and so on. Domain names can also tell you from where in the world a user is accessing Internet. This is a partial list of international domain names. Electronic mail or email is the best example of why Internet addresses are important. To send email to someone, you must know his or her Internet address. Email is used more than any other Internet resource. In fact, for many users, email is Internet. Email lets you send mail instantly to anyone on Earth who is connected to Internet. Email travels at the speed of light. Not surprisingly, email users refer to regular postal mail services as snail mail. Snail mail's fastest delivery overnight takes 17 hours and costs $10. Email takes a few seconds and is free. If the use of email on Internet continues to increase at the rate it has since 1991, its volume will eclipse snail mail in less than five years. Security is an issue with email, however. System operators and employees can legally monitor email sent over their systems. Therefore, you should never send private information, such as credit card numbers, over email. On Internet, a computer on the other side of the world is as easy to use as the computer on your desk. The tool that makes possible the access of remote computers is called Telnet. There are many reasons to Telnet to other computers, to run programs that won't run on your own computer, to search through databases that are too large to download, to play games against other players from around the world, or simply to meet interesting people. To use Telnet, type the command name followed by the Internet address of the computer you want to access. This is the address for the Library of Congress. Telnet turns Internet into a huge virtual computer. Once you've connected, you won't be able to tell that you're working on a computer hundreds or thousands of miles away. Using Telnet, you can access hundreds of local networks that offer a wealth of data, including local government information and local library services. Like the Library of Congress, these networks are valuable Internet resources. FTP is an acronym for File Transfer Protocol. It is one of the most important and most widely used services on Internet. FTP lets you move files, databases, programs, and pictures from distant computers to your own. Like Telnet, FTP is invoked by typing in the command name followed by the Internet address of the computer you want to access. Most FTP sessions require you to log into the accessed machine. A common name that is accepted is Anonymous. Always enter your Internet address as the password. This is how easy it is to move a file from a remote computer to your own machine. Thousands of FTP sites are available on Internet. They contain resources on every imaginable topic. On Internet, news is a non-stop phenomenon. Millions of people all over the world use Internet to continuously exchange information and opinions about every conceivable subject. The user's network, or Usenet, is their vehicle of choice. Usenet contains more than 5,000 news groups, each centered around a particular subject. Within each news group is a library of postings contributed by members of the group. You can belong to as many news groups as you have time for. And if you can't find a particular subject you're interested in, then you can start your own news group. The concept here is to bring together people with similar interests without regard to geography. Every news group has a posting called Frequently Asked Questions or Facts. 
Network etiquette demands that you review this file before posting articles. You should never waste other people's time with concerns or issues that have already been documented. One of the most popular services on Internet is called Internet Relay Chat, or IRC. IRC is a permanent 24-hour-a-day gathering place where people around the world can congregate to carry on conversations about everything and anything. This unique meeting place is similar to Usenet in that thousands of topics are discussed, but the difference is that IRC discussions are happening in real time. No postings here, only people talking to one another via their keyboards. IRC is like a global cocktail party. You join a group of people who are having several conversations. Anything you say is heard by everyone in your group. You can eavesdrop on other conversations. You can move on to another group, join in, or just listen. You can invite one or more people into a corner and have a private conversation. You can even whisper private remarks to individuals. So much information is available on Internet that knowing where to look or even how to begin looking is often impossible. Luckily, Internet users have several advanced utilities at their disposal, including Mosaic. One of the most popular Internet utilities, Mosaic is a powerful tool that makes accessing data on Internet fast and simple. Mosaic provides a large number of advanced features, including embedded graphics and the ability to execute multimedia applications. Here is just one example of what Mosaic can do. Current weather information is always available on Internet. Mosaic allows you to define a subset of information of interest to you and to display it on your computer as a weather map. Mosaic comes ready to run and is easy to install. It's available through anonymous FTP at ftp.ncsa.uiuc.edu. I read a little while ago about a family that was scattered in many countries around the world wherein more than a hundred different members of the same family keep in touch through the internet. They keep people informed of births and deaths and graduations and children in dozens of countries who have never met each other feel as if they know each other and understand the bonds of family. This videotape serves as an introduction to the riches that await you on internet. Internet is the largest computer network in history. It connects millions of people together and lets them join an exciting new international community unlike anything that has ever existed. Internet is for everyone. Teachers, students, librarians, scientists, business people, doctors, lawyers, artists, and politicians. In the next few years, Internet will become even more important to global communication and commerce. It will serve as the model for all future computer networks, especially the Information Superhighway.